Uh, tell me about Lee Studios. Well, I do a lot of things. Um, Native Strength is the main thing. I'm beginning the fourth season of Native Strength. There's 12 episodes in each season. We're shown on Roku, Amazon, and about 100 different stations across the country. Um, and of course, my YouTube channel. The, uh, I also work on music videos, not only my own music, but other acts as well, including uh, Robert Fleischman, who did Wheel in the Sky for Journey. Um, <clears throat> let's see. There's so much on my YouTube channel. I, I just recently started a new playlist about Native Americans and star people. There's a, a rich history of Native Americans and star people interactions, both past and present, um, you know, recent history and ancient history. So I'm exploring some of those traditional stories as well as medicine stories, which are kind of like parables. They're teaching stories in the Native American culture. Was there something specific that inspired you to start this? Was it something you always wanted to do? The native strength thing, basically. Um, I studied with many different medicine men and women over the years. As I traveled, you know, doing the personal appearances, uh, I was able to go to several different reservations and meet the elders and study the ancient ways. And I wrote five books in the native strength series. And then I realized that nobody really watches books anymore. People are more interested in watching videos and television shows. So I thought, you know, I can do this. I, you know, know how to light a set. I know about camera angles. I know about editing. So all I had to do was bridge the gap between the analog and the digital world to learn how to do it nowadays on my computer or at home. And uh, that was a lot of fun, you know? Um, so now that I, I learned that, you know, how to do the show, I thought, well, I have all these songs from when I had the band, I could do music videos for that. So I started doing that and other people started approaching me and saying, you know, we like your music videos, can you do something for us? And then when Robert, when I was able to work with Robert Fleischman, it's like, wow, this is very nice. And one thing just kind of led to another you know, then there's the random ramble playlist on my YouTube channel. Which is phenomenal. That's I'm sorry? That's great. Thanks. I watched a couple of them last night. They're, they're, they're... Well, there were some things I wanted to get off my chest, you know, some pet peeves, a lot of misconceptions out there about the entertainment, the adult entertainment business and about how things were. I don't know how things are now. Um, but, you know, I, I thought, you know, this, this would be a good platform to address some of those things and enlighten some people. And, and, and just share some of my thought processes as somebody who's basically living in two cultures, what it's like, you know, and, and the, the, um, the ironies that I see, basically. <laughs> you did the actual subjects that you picked. Were there specific reasons why you chose, like why I left the business or the reality of the business? So was that points you felt people didn't understand? Or is that something Yes, I felt there was a lot of misconceptions about that. Um, I think a lot of people, the whole thing about why I left the business, there had been a lot of questions about that. Um, where do I begin? <laughs> My second ex-husband, um, I, I have a lot of health issues. And I was going through a very serious time where I couldn't answer my fan club mail and I have a very big sense of responsibility to my fans having met a lot of them firsthand. I had everything in storage for almost two years and traveled to a different place every week. And then when I did have a place where everything, where I kept all my stuff, I was on the road anywhere from two to three weeks a month. So I wanted to keep in contact with my fans. When they'd write to me at my fan club address, I felt it was my responsibility to answer them at least in a reasonable length of time. And I was going through a situation where I could not get up. I could not get out of bed. I could not walk to the bathroom. There was no way I could answer these emails. These, well, it wasn't even emails back then. It was snail mail. There's no way I could be responsible and do what I wanted to do to make myself feel good. And it was really stressing me out. And the doctors had told my husband at the time and myself that this stress was what was causing all the problems. They were wrong. They didn't know. They didn't do the tests. 
We later found out what it really was. But at the time, my husband wanted to do the right thing and help me out. So he sent letters to everybody saying, I'm dead. She's dead. Don't expect her to answer you. She's not going to. She's dead. So there's a lot of people that thought I was dead. And there's some people in the business that had maybe half of a brain cell working at best who thought that somehow if I told everybody I was dead and couldn't answer my email, my snail mails and sign autographs, that somehow I was going to make money off of that. I don't see how one makes money off of that when one closes the fan club and closes the post office box and doesn't answer any answer any mail anymore. But somebody thought that that was the case. Whoa, it takes all kinds. So I wanted to get that out there that no, that's not what happened. I'm not dead. I didn't fake my own death. This is the whole story. My husband did it out of the goodness of his heart. Mind you, we're divorced. So if I'm saying he did something good out of the goodness of his heart, trust me, he did. Because I'll be the first one to tell you when he's a jerk. <laughs> there have been times, you know, I mean, I'm divorced. That's why. So I'll be the first one to be honest about it. But this was not nefarious. This was not malintentioned. This was out of the goodness of his heart. He was trying to do the right thing. So I wanted to get that out there and get that clear. And then a lot of people had asked about how much control we had on the set and what it was like with working with different people and that sort of thing. And you know, there's that unspoken rule in the business where you want to paint this beautiful picture about how all is wonderful in this world and we get along beautifully and we love each other. And in many cases, that actually is the case. But <laughs> after having been gone for several decades, I thought it was time to throw the curtain back, you know, re release the truth, take off the facade and show people this is what really went down. I, I you know, the whole story about what happened and how there were, the director was doing drugs and left and we did the wrong script because he gave us the wrong script and then wanted us to work again for free. And I walked off the set and said, no more. And then my first ex-husband, Bud Lee, was a total idiot to me, a complete jackass. It became painfully apparent that all I was to him was a meal ticket. So <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't put that out there to bash anyone in particular, not Paul Thomas, not my ex-husband, but just to tell the truth. That no, I didn't leave because I got tired of the business or because of any other, I felt guilty or I got Christianized or whatever you might fantasize in your world. This is the truth. This is what happened. And um, it, I suppose <laughs> we all have to take responsibility for our actions. So it's my fault because I'm too professional and I expected people to behave the way they did back when I was working with Caribbean films and Harry Moaning. And I knew things had changed and I knew things had gone downhill, but I didn't really expect them to have gone downhill that much. And once I was slapped in the face, so to speak, with how bad things had actually gotten in the business, I decided that was not something I wanted to be part of anymore. Two questions there. When you told everybody you're leaving or you're stopping, you're quitting, did they take you seriously or did they just think that you were upset and you were throwing a tantrum? No, they thought I was upset and I was just throwing a tantrum. Yeah, I tried to contact um, Steve Hirsch of Vivid Video probably close to a dozen times on the phone. And I even went over there and he would not talk to me. He would not see me. He didn't want to know what had happened. He didn't care. And that just solidified what I had believed, had recently learned that this was not a business with integrity anymore. This was not really a business. <laughs> this was a, a fly by night, nobody really cares anymore. And, and that was very, um, very disheartening. I, I was heartbroken. And when you're married, you hope that your partner is your friend 
hopefully your best friend. And when I wanted to turn to Bud, not only for emotional support, but for the physical support of what I had done, that I was in the right to stand up for myself and say, no, I'm not gonna work for free. I already did a movie, the movie's almost done. What do you mean I'm not gonna get paid for it? And now you want me to make another one for free? I thought he would have my back, but he did not, not in any way, shape or form. He was even abusive to our children, bringing them into the argument, saying, if you need food, don't eat because your mama won't work anymore. So we don't have any money anymore because she threw a tantrum. And I thought, wow, I have been so blind. I didn't realize I was in my own little world. I thought things were fine. I was on the road dancing. I didn't realize that while I was on the road dancing and I'd come back and make one or two movies a year that things had changed so much. And that after 13, 12, 13 years of a relationship, 12 years of marriage, that our marriage had changed that much. So it was um, kind of shocking to me, but also very depressing, you know? I really didn't realize it was that bad. When you left, did you ever come back? Did I ever what? Did you ever return? No. Or when you were done, you were done. I was done. I did dance in some clubs right, right. after that, but I never got back on a, an adult film set again. No, never even entertained the thought. That's amazing. Where are you from originally? Indianapolis, Indiana. Born and raised? Yes. Well, I spent a couple of years in Florida with my birth mother, but my grandmother raised me in Indianapolis. Did you go to public school, private school? Public school. I was raised very, very, very poor. <laughs> in grade school, did you have a favorite subject? English. And music. Point, I'm sorry to interrupt you. At that point, you were very young. Do you have any idea what you want to do with the rest of your life? I wanted to be an actress and a dancer. A uh, dancer first, actress second, preferably in musical comedies, musicals on Broadway. Had you seen something on TV or just something that someone you idolized or emulated? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you asked some very good questions. This is going to give you some good insight to my psyche. Um, my grandmother raised me and her sister um, had a business together of making draperies and I'd go out there and watch TV while they worked. And they, they were night owls. So there were all these old night movies on. And one of the ones that I loved the best was Gypsy. Are you familiar with that G musical? Gypsy, yeah, kind of. I'm thinking it's of Bette Midler, but I don't Rose think Bette was in it. It's about Gypsy Rose Lee, who was okay. a very famous burlesque star. Else. Yeah. So um, that, yeah, I loved that. And my grandmother, my aunt loved it too. I mean, we'd sing the songs and stuff. So um, that was very inspiring to me. In high school, were you popular with the boys? Not at all. I didn't like high school at all. I don't even remember any of the people I went to, went to school with. When I went to my high school reunion, nobody remembered me but a teacher. I was a bookworm. I was a loner. I stuck to my work. I was a straight A student. I graduated in three years and got the hell out of there. I spent all my time in the theater, doing theater, <laughs> community theater and musicals. Do you remember any of the uh, projects you did in theater? Any of the? Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, the Fantastics twice, Godspell, Of the I Sing, Kiss Me Kate was my first uh, musical that I choreographed, Pippin, um, Damn Yankees, Oh my gosh, there there was 72 different plays and musicals wow. that I did by the time I graduated from high school. 